Hi everybody, we've done it for supply side policies, we've done it for fiscal policy, let's now do it for monetary policy, looking at major themes in the UK economy. So if you get a question about monetary policy and it's tied to a major theme in the UK, you're good to go, you're going to smash the essay. So take everything down, make sure you watch those prior videos so you've completed the set, make sure you watch my UK stats video as well, a lot of that context is going to be very important to understand what's coming your way. So let's dive into it. What are the major themes with UK monetary policy? Well, we are using contractionary monetary policy in the UK at the moment. But to understand why, we need to go back a little bit, back to COVID times and understand the huge expansionary monetary policy that was used then. COVID, yes, was a big health crisis, but it was a very deep economic crisis as well. In the UK, our worst recession in over 300 years. How did the Bank of England and the Monetary Policy Committee react to that? Well, they used expansionary monetary policy. They cut interest rates all the way down to 0.1%, the lowest rate in the history of the Bank of England. But no, that rates didn't fall that much because they were already very low, already at 0.75%. So from there to then 0.1, as far as they could go. The Bank of England wanted to push rates even lower, but they couldn't. They hit zero, essentially. So in their mind, they were forced to use quantitative easing to get AD up even further, to try and promote recovery even further. £495 billion worth of QE money was pumped into the UK economy. That is an extraordinarily high sum, an eye-watering sum of new money pumped into the UK. So yes, that was the dual expansionary monetary policy that was used during COVID times. For what intentions? Well, for exactly the reasons that we're used to from expansionary monetary policy. Try and boost AD, increase growth, reduce unemployment, fight back against this very deep recession, promote economic recovery and try and close that negative output gap. During COVID times, there was also a threat of deflation. So to try and prevent that was another intention too. And yeah, we saw some of those intentions, that is for sure. We saw that hold. COVID recovery was very strong in the UK. We can thank some of these policies maybe in playing their part in promoting strong recovery in the aftermath of COVID lockdowns. But we can't ignore that there were major concerns at the same time. First of all, banks simply were not willing to lend at the very beginning of the COVID crisis. A lot of banks were worried about whether workers and their jobs would last the crisis, whether businesses and those industries would survive the crisis. So they weren't willing to lend until they knew exactly what the future was going to look like and what industries, what jobs would remain after COVID ended. Also, we've seen how rates weren't cut from a very high level to a much lower level. They were cut from a very low level to a slightly lower level, limiting the overall effectiveness of rate cuts. But also we can't deny that in particular, the huge eye-watering sum of quantitative easing sowed the seeds for extremely high inflation in the aftermath of COVID lockdowns. Yeah, the irony, the Bank of England, the Monetary Policy Committee primed with an inflation targeting mandate to keep inflation low and stable at the 2% rate. Yes, through their policy actions, triggered very high inflation, which ended up going way beyond target. In fact, as I'm talking now, we are marking three years exactly to the date when inflation went beyond target. So for three years, inflation has always been beyond the target rate. The Bank of England certainly had a big part to play in causing high inflation, which peaked at 11.1% in October 2022. Remarkable, the kind of inflation that we've seen. And it's been super scary. Yes, these policies had a part to play in it. So in return, what did the Bank of England do? They responded by raising interest rates and using contractionary monetary policy. Interest rates have risen from 0.1% during COVID times all the way now to 5.25%. They've risen a lot and in a very short space of time as well. It was December 2021 was the first time that Bank of England raised rates in the aftermath of COVID, but also they've been using quantitative tightening. That is literally the reversal of quantitative easing, trying to reduce the money supply and drive up interest rates on bonds that way. So dual now contractionary monetary policy to tame the very high inflation that we've had for the last three years. Yes, but note that the Bank of England were very slow to the game. They raised rates December 2021, but we had high inflation. We could see it happening well before then, really May of 2021. It was clear that inflation was rising and was going to overshoot the target for a long period of time. But the Bank of England in summer 2021 came out and said, 
don't worry about inflation. It's not going to be a threat. It's not going to be very high. It will kind of sort itself out. Certainly no reason to be worried about it. No reason to raise interest rates right now was their response summer 2021. But then December 2021, they came out again and said, oh no, actually, we're worried about inflation spiraling out of control. How wrong could they be? So they responded by raising rates. They've raised rates very quickly to now acquire a high level of 5.25%. Okay, um, has it worked? Well, we know inflation has come down. As we're talking at the moment, inflation is 3.2%, but it's taken a long time for inflation to come down. It was only really last year, 2023, where we saw significant drops in the rate of inflation. Note that we're still above target as well, by the way. Core inflation is still quite high, but the fact it took so long for inflation to come down tells you the time lags issue when it comes to using monetary policy. But also recently, um, inflation has been driven by supply side causes. The war in Ukraine in particular that drove up oil prices and fuel prices, gas electricity prices went up a lot, food prices went up a lot. Now we know contractionary monetary policy targets the demand side of the economy, not the supply side of the economy. It does nothing to reduce oil prices or food prices or gas electricity prices. So has inflation come down because of contractionary monetary policy or have the Bank of England got a bit lucky that those prices have been easing, helping to reduce inflation? I would say more so it's the latter. Um, speaking of, let's talk about the intentions and the issues. So we know that the major intentions of contractionary monetary policy is to tame higher than target rates of inflation. But we now have the evaluation points just mentioned to counter this point nicely if you're writing an essay about it. There are other reasons for pushing interest rates up as well to reduce the amount of household debt, a genuine argument here. And since interest rates have gone up, the amount of household debt has come down. The number of household insolvencies, bankruptcies has come down as well. That's a positive thing. But also higher interest rates that push up the rate of return on saving can promote more saving. That in itself is a good thing, good for personal finances. We know savings are a safety net in times of economic difficulty and job losses, but also higher interest rates, normalizing interest rates can promote more sustainable lending and borrowing in the economy. Yeah, only those who need to borrow money, only those who can afford to borrow money will do so. Moving the UK economy away from debt-fueled growth, debt-fueled consumption, debt-fueled investment to promote economic growth towards more sustainable growth, more organic growth as people spend from their savings instead. But also pushing rates up back to normal levels will mean the Bank of England have a decent place to cut interest rates from the next time they want to use expansionary monetary policy. That was a big issue, wasn't it, during COVID times when rates were already very, very low. Pushing them higher means, yeah, a, a cut will be more meaningful in its impact. But what about the issues? Well, we know at the moment in the UK, growth is stagnating. Technically, we've been in a recession. Unemployment is on the rise. Yeah, that's what contractionary demand side policies can do. And because interest rates have gone up so much and in a very short space of time, it's acted as a shock, a demand side shock to the UK economy. So yeah, we can definitely say contractionary monetary policy has played a major part in keeping growth low and pushing up unemployment in the UK. Nice argument. What about the impact on the indebted, indebted households, those with credit card debts, mortgage debts, or just generally high levels of consumer debt? What about businesses with high debt? You can worry about their ability to pay back these debts at such high interest. Worst case scenario for households, if they can't afford to repay those debts, they might go bankrupt. Their assets get taken away. They might end up homeless. Businesses, worst case scenario, they shut down by not being able to re uh, pay these debts, they go bankrupt, pushing up unemployment. But even if it's not that worst case scenario, for individuals with high debt, you can worry about their living standards. You know, more mortgage holders in the UK, um, as a result of high interest rates, have seen a drop in their disposable income by 20%. So the living standards concerns are valid, in particular um, at a time of a major cost of living crisis in the UK, yet another way that living standards have been hit as a result of higher interest rates. Higher interest rates also discourage business investment. The last thing we need in the UK, investment has been terrible ever since we voted Brexit. This is yet another reason to discourage businesses investing, which will harm short-term and long-term growth in the UK. But also early 2023, because of high interest rates, banks like First Choice Bank, Silicon Valley Bank in the US, Credit Suisse were going bust. They blamed higher interest rates for their bank failures. 
saying that a lot of uh, people they lent to were not able to repay debts at such high interest, creating insolvency issues for them. But also with high interest rates in the economy, uh, people were moving their savings out of banks, chasing higher yielding assets out there instead, creating liquidity crisis. And that was a big reason for bank failures that we saw at the beginning of 2023. And at the time, there were concerns that those bank failures could then ripple across the entire sector and bring down other banks, bring down the entire sector, systemic risk in financial markets, in the financial sector. But luckily, because of strong financial market regulation, uh, we didn't actually see that happen. But a nice point to mention regardless. Uh, the debate at the moment in the developed world, is it time to start cutting rates? Because these cons are biting and maybe some people are saying the intentions have now been realized. But from my UK stats video, we know it's too premature at the moment to be cutting interest rates. The inflation battle is not yet won. We're in the end game, the last mile of this inflation fight. But we know core inflation is still at 4.2%, wage growth at 5.6%, inflation is still sticky. We need to see kind of further progress in that coming down before we, we can be confident in reducing rates. The worst thing to do at the moment would be to cut interest rates to then get higher growth and reduce unemployment but refueling the inflation fire, which take away the benefits of that higher growth and lower unemployment. So no, it's not time to reduce rates right now. Inflation is still the primary concern. Maybe later in the year, we can start talking about cutting rates being more appropriate. So there we have it, guys. Monetary policy themes in the UK. You're now ready if this question comes up to smash it. You can weigh up arguments well. You can use great stats to back up your points as well. Really showcase that top knowledge to the examiner. Make sure you've watched the fiscal policy and supply side policies video already released. Make sure you've watched the UK stats video. Just watch it all and make sure we're prepping well for this exam coming up. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.